Fifteen years ago, there was a war. Well, wars broken out here plenty of times before. They've tried to invade the Southlands through the Northern Valley time and time again. Luck was never on their side, though, and their victories didn't last long. They didn't realize that times had changed. Facing one defeat after another, losing territory and watching their nation dwindle, they built up their industrial strength to unprecedented heights and used it to wage one final battle against the world. That was 15 years ago. They fought ferociously, but were utterly defeated. The Belkins then committed the unthinkable. They used nuclear weapons on their own soil. Seeing this tragedy unfold before their own eyes, the victorious countries vowed to throw down their weapons. The world was once again at peace. And thanks to them, it seemed it would last forever. On a distant island, far away from civilization, the protectors of the peace take to the skies. was howling at the earth below. Give me a break. I'm babysitting nuggets up here. Command room to Wardog Squadron. We have leakers, aircraft type unknown. Crossing the border at Cape Landers, bearing 278 to 302. Captain Bartlett, your flight is the only group close enough to make the intercept. Go trail and stay close. The three of us will go high and engage the bandits. All other aircraft stay low and out of the fight. Sorry about this. The captain's apology to me seemed misplaced. One instructor had survived the fight, but crashed on landing. The other one was killed in action high up in the clouds. It wasn't his fault that the unidentified aircraft fired on us without warning. Nor was it his fault that the low-altitude area where he sent his trainees was directly in front of the enemy. Eight people died because the command room had misplaced some zeros. That pilot in the number seven was amazing. Did you see her fight back? I couldn't bear to watch. Nagase, you keep flying like that and you'll die real soon. I won't die, sir. The only surviving trainee's voice was almost a whisper. Are you sure? You look like you couldn't hurt a fly. Her face was pale, but she still managed to smile a bit for the camera. The photo, along with my camera, was confiscated by base security. It was as if our little undeclared war never happened. I came to cover this remote island because I heard that a very unique squadron leader was stationed here. I didn't realize he was this unique, though. This bad-mouthed, good-natured old firebrand could take the greenest of rookies and forge him into a fearsome fighter pilot. Of course, that possibility vanished with today's encounter. The only crew he had left now were Second Lieutenant Nagase and the few pilots that happened to be on the ground that day. I know you don't like this, but we're short on people. Starting tomorrow, all you nuggets are going to be sitting alert. 
If we launch, stay glued to me up there. Nagase? Sir. You're flying number two on my wing. Gotta keep an eye on you, or who knows what you'll get yourself into. The whole affair with the unidentified aircraft was covered up. There was even a rumor going around that it was actually a UFO. Officially, the world was still at peace. Having witnessed the battle myself, I wasn't allowed to leave the island. Why do they even bother reprimanding me anymore? I know I'm going to be stuck at Captain forever. Who do you think's covering up the battle? Listen, the only thing across that ocean is Murska Air Base. That's Yuktabanian territory. But haven't we been allies with the Yukes since the war 15 years ago? Yeah. That's why we got people working their asses off trying to confirm what the hell's going on over there. I bet they've got hotlines ringing off the hook somewhere upstairs. The government doesn't want to get the public riled up with all this, you know? But it doesn't matter. Soldiers like us are too stupid to think for ourselves, so we just gotta keep our mouths shut when they tell us to. I feel kind of bad for you, actually. <laughs> it's all right. I get to be with you guys. Captain's probably hating this more than anybody. Hmm? He used to have a lady friend over in Yuktabania. Ah, uh, that's just an old war wound now. This was the room, or the cell, I had been assigned to. Captain Hamilton. Unlike his superior, the base commander who locked me in here, he's been very reasonable with me. He even got my camera back. He told me that if his uncle wasn't a soldier, he would have liked to have a job like mine. Well, we don't have any reason to hold you anymore. What do you mean? Yuktobania just declared war. They've launched an offensive simultaneously, too. Our naval port at St. Hewlett is getting bombed right now. There were only three of them now. When the rescue chopper arrived, the captain was nowhere to be seen. The only thing they found was the retreating enemy intelligence vessel. This island used to be a place of exile from the rest of the world. It then became our first line of defense against the enemy. Lightly tomorrow, I wouldn't waste my energy worrying about that if I were you. <sighs> we're an auxiliary squadron, you know, so His Highness the Lieutenant Colonel will just come down from the mainland and take over. That's all. Phew, I love this sound. Calms me down. I'm gonna sleep well tonight. I heard that the one who broke the captain's heart 15 years ago was a recon major in the Yuke Army. Yeah, I did my history homework. We were allies back then. Man, the base commander sure wasn't being subtle about making accusations. <laughs> was there anything suspicious about the captain's behavior, he says. Hell, I'm more suspicious about the screw in his damn head. Ah, you're kidding me. An air raid? Give me a break, man.
from the sky the morning after. Pops came back like nothing had happened, as if the open sky had always been his one true home. Only 17 hours had passed since the war began. Yuktabania's war strategies seemed to be minutely timed to avoid giving Osea any chance to launch a counterattack. I got a notice of assignment as a member of the press corps. I guess Captain Hamilton had pulled a few strings for me. I didn't waste any time going to work. Second Lieutenant Nagase, inside the crew room. She's sitting by herself, writing something in her book. Nobody knew what she was writing. I realize these people may well be the story I was looking for all this time. In fact, I was sure of it. We set off for the northern region to refuel. This place is paradise compared to what's further ahead. Beyond our destination lies the closed gate to Nord Belka. Fifteen years ago, the Belkans set off seven nuclear bombs there to stave off the advancing Allied forces, entombing themselves in the frozen valleys to the north. That bit of history should have been enough of a lesson for us all. The seven Belkan cities near the gate were vaporized and the local area is still highly radioactive. Our landing point was in the state of North Osea, formerly a haven for Belkans, but now entrusted to Osea North. If you refer to it by that name in front of the local guy, you put a scowl on his face and tell you that this is South Belka. Higher Lark meant a lot to us. Our flight training took place here on this airfield. On the base, we were surrounded by junior cadets, eager to hear war stories. The newspaper article about us, written by that journalist Jeanette, made it here faster than we did. Somewhere along the line, we had become the most experienced pilots in the entire world. Captain Bartlett's directed to take these inexperienced pilots back with us to Sand Island when we returned. Man, we better thank Pops for this. Why not? Because he's the guy who pounded basic fighter maneuvers into us. Now we can lord it over all these guys. You said it. These pilots had only a tenuous grasp of flying, much less mid-air refueling, so we had to land at every base along the way. I can't believe we have to send them off to guard the western coastline. The white bird rose up once again. Laser cannon in its wings. It was a moving sight. In my heart, though, I wished it didn't have to be used in war. None of them found out why the enemy targeted the base until much later. Of course, by that time, it was too late. After my article, The Four Wings of Sand Island, was published to wide acclaim, I grew bolder. Here was a profile view of the base commander, the emperor of this base. 
Don't. He's in a bad mood today. If he catches you, he'll have your head. What happened? The Ark Bird. Huh? The White Bird in outer space, with Yuktabania outclassing us in firepower. It was the President's one trump card in the peace negotiations. And now, it's fallen right out of our hands. So you're saying we don't know how long the war will drag on? The Ark Bird. A superweapon capable of attacking from space, far beyond the reach of the enemy. Its power generator was destroyed by explosives planted inside a supply shipment launched from Earth. Once again, the balance of power had tipped toward Yuktabania. General Howell, Supreme Commander of the Ocean Armies deployed to Yuktabania, successfully stormed the enemy beach and established a command center on the spot. The general, who claims to have been given full operational authority by the president, then made the following declaration. We will march forward and we will not lay down our arms until the Yuktabanian capital has fallen. Aured, the Ocean capital. The winds of war have yet to reach here. The air still smells of peace. But that wasn't us. By the time we got there, they had already... That's right. We heard them over the radio. They call themselves the 8492nd Squadron. 8492! 8492! Is that all you people have to say? There is no squadron in our military with that number. Damn it! What the hell's going on here? Despite the hectic mood among the staff at HQ, the start of the briefing was delayed. But the weary pilots, knowing full well that they must force their exhausted bodies back into the air once the order was given, weren't the slightest bit disturbed by the delay. Hey, what are you writing there? I just can't remember this next phrase. Here, let me see. Hey! The princess couldn't feed the dove that day. She was too sick. May I take a look? Rosgris. The demon of Rosgris got her, right? You know the story? The demon from the North Sea. I remember. My grandma used to tell me bedtime stories about it. And every time she did, I'd be too scared to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Ugh. Settle down, people. I knew a little about that famous legend, too. When history witnesses a great change, Raz Gris reveals itself, first as a dark demon. As a demon, it uses its power to rain death upon the land, and then it dies. However, after a period of slumber, Raz Gris returns. The ace pilots who sunk the enemy submarines are right over there. And I'm the person you want to interview now? No, it's not that. It's just that I heard you used to be a fighter pilot yourself. I just fly freight planes for the maintenance crews now. The captain, Captain Bartlett that is, but it was time for an old man like me to quit trying to compete with the young guys. Talk about a lack of respect. <laughs> Where did you meet Captain Bartlett? We were both shot down and we bailed out behind enemy lines in the last war. We got through the bullet-ridden battlefield and made it back to the Allied front line. And I tell you, it was tough getting the army to believe we were on their side. Shot down? You two? Hey, it was a long time ago. Everyone makes mistakes, right? Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. Even if you're not flying with those pilots, your age and experience provide a lot of support for all of them. I just wanted to tell you that. I've seen that you really listen to what they say, and you always have helpful suggestions for them. Well, thank you. I think they're all going to need you, now more than ever. I'll do what I can. 
These people, it's like they're walking on a tightrope that could snap at any second. They're going to reach their breaking point sooner or later. Yeah. She'd left her book in the crew room. A Blue Dove for the Princess. That was the title of the book she left behind. A favorite book from her childhood. The pages have torn off over the years and she had been writing down the words that were on those pages, trying to remember every sentence and every verse I love this book so much, but I only have faint memories of what was inside. I feel like I've grown so far away from everything since then. I remember how she looked when she told me that. I couldn't help wondering, did she choose to crash on purpose? rather than having to take part in the invasion of another country. <sighs> when the rescue team found her, she was holding captive a group of soldiers who were sent in to capture her. Behind her was the helicopter crew that crashed while trying to rescue her. She had saved them, treated their wounds, and hid them in a safe place. I needed to rethink my image of her after this, after seeing her amazing toughness and tenacity. She even managed to obtain a little information from the soldiers she captured. It seems the people of Yuktabania were also beginning to have doubts about their leaders in the current war. And word of Nagase's squadron was getting around, as the force that sunk two of their most powerful submarines. The Yuk army soldiers had nicknamed them the Demons of Razgriz. She was obviously very proud of that when she told me about it later. Perhaps her pride was for Captain Bartlett, the man who had trained them, or maybe it was for her current captain. However, nobody in the upper echelons of her own army was proud of them. Bartlett was still missing, and that made his old trainees the subject of suspicion and criticism. Look at that wreckage. I'm amazed they're still making them like this. They? This looks like a standard fighter jet, but it's actually different. They've done a lot of things to reduce the number of parts and cut down manufacturing costs, without sacrificing the plane's strength and performance. Very cost effective. You could make three planes for the price of two this way. Who's this they you're referring to? North Osea Grunder Industries. Formerly the South Belka Munitions Factory, run by the Belkan government. But Osea has taken over that land now. South Belkan technology is being used for Osea. Why does Yuktabania have this? Good question. Actually, <clears throat> speaking of Belka, Osea recruited some Belkan flying aces after the war 15 years ago to strengthen our Air Force. You know about this? No. Really? An aggressor squadron comprised entirely of Belkan aces. Our old enemy. Well, that's the rumor anyway. Even an old fox like me isn't sure they exist. I bet the current administration isn't even aware of the story.
The so-called impregnable fortress fell in half a day, and the momentum of the Ocean army had reached a peak. Its final stronghold lost, the Yugtubanian army was setting up a barricade in the urban area up ahead. The next battle could see a lot of bloodshed, with innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. However, the men and officers of the Ocean army were optimistic. They thought, as long as the three fighters from Sand Island were taking part in the action, things would turn out all right. They have become the center of the army's strength now. Would it surprise you if I said that President Harling is nowhere to be found within the capital? Not really. The hardline war Osea is waging right now hardly resembles the peace policy the President was promoting. Let me guess. He disappeared just before we invaded Yuktabania, right? Exactly. My journalist friends told me that nobody's seen him enter or leave the office since. All of his decisions are communicated through the Vice President. And it gets better. A lot of the military officers that resigned over disagreement with the President's arms reduction plan have started to return to the capital. I found out something myself. That Belkin aggressor force I was telling you about. Apparently they're called the 8492nd Squadron. Also, and here's the kicker, Captain Hamilton, the adjutant base commander here, used to be assigned to the 8492nd. What? Oh, the back. There's no point in talking to that blockhead commander. He treated our president like an idiot just because he wanted peace. What about his adjutant, Captain Hamilton? Roger that. The captain and I will go see him. Grim, you go let Jeanette and Pops know. Right. Be careful. What? Nagase and the captain went to see Hamilton? What is it? Did I do something wrong? Let's hurry. You got it. We don't have time to warn the captain and Nagase. We'll have to talk to the base commander ourselves. Coming, second lieutenant. I was just thinking about calling you over. Me? Special Forces Second Lieutenant Peter and Beagle. Or I guess you prefer Pops. Fifteen years ago, you and Bartlett were shot down over enemy terrain. Bartlett's squadron HQ was destroyed. And all of its data was fried by Belka's magnetic pulse weaponry. When you made it back to the Allied front lines, it was Bartlett's word that convinced them that you were his squadron leader. Is that really true? Bartlett turned out to be a spy. So, who are you really? Can't prove anything about your military record. Can you? Arrest them on sight! They're spies! Shoot them if you have to! 